Hi, I'm Mary Kopczynski, the CEO of Regalytics. Welcome to this week's Regulatory Roundup, where I will be hosting with my lovely son, Amir, who's home sick again today. Uh, the most interesting alerts from the 3,174 alerts that came in last week. The regulator of the week is the... SEC. Good job, Amir. The SEC is considering a set of comprehensive reforms to improve cybersecurity risk management for registered investment advisors, registered investment companies, and business development companies. If the rules are adopted, it's going to create new requirements for advisors and funds cybersecurity risk management and incident reporting systems. That's not as exciting as the fact that sometimes the stars align and every single one of the SEC commissioners that spoke publicly on this are in support of this change. In funny news, I'll say, remember how the banks worked really hard for the last five years or so to have settlement between each other in T plus two days, uh, which means within 48 hours, the money or the securities will move. Uh, this was in contrast to the previous five days that the banking system had before. Anyway, this was a huge operational effort on the part of the largest financial institutions in the world. Uh, well, last week, the SEC just voted to shorten the standard settlement cycle to T plus one. And in that proposal, they asked financial institutions what it would take to get to T plus zero. And if that is not enough of a headache, the SEC has also proposed to change the beneficial owner reporting rules so that you have to tell them the beneficial owners of all of the companies in your system in five days instead of 10 and changes of your knowledge of who the owners of the companies are. Uh, it needs to be filed in one day and all of it needs to be filed using a structured machine readable data language. Have fun with that. The topic of the week undoubtedly is BlockFi. So I've been watching this since the summer when the first states came out uh, with their complaint on BlockFi. So it's not a huge surprise, but yes, it's a $50 million fine from the SEC. And then the remaining 50 million is being settled among the 32 states that were part of the settlement. The order finds in it that interest bearing digital asset accounts are a officially securities and should have been registered within the SEC and the 50 states. For those of you interested in climate change and ESG, California, as you know, is using every agency in its power to combat climate change and the court system is no exception. I did not know this, but there are courthouses in California that make up a total of 21 million square feet of space. And they announced this week that they're gonna be working across all of their facilities to reduce their carbon footprint. In other news, California continues to be all about diversity and inclusion, most recently in their civil action against Tesla for discrimination against black workers in California. After receiving hundreds of complaints from workers, the Department of Fair Employment and Housing found evidence that Tesla's Fremont factory is a racially segregated workplace where black workers are subjected to racial slurs and discriminated against in job assignments, discipline, pay, and promotion, creating a hostile work environment. Uh, I hope some of Elon Musk's massive charitable donation of Tesla stock goes to the NCAAP. California's brother from another mother, New York, this week also announced the Officer of Chief Disability Officer to advocate on behalf of persons with disabilities in the state of New York. For those of you following privacy, Illinois is revising its Biometric Information Privacy Act. Yes, believe it or not, there are specific state-by-state -state rules about privacy of biometric information too. It's been a while since I've done an update from the weed feed, but here's some news that was interesting this week. Colorado reported over $2 billion in revenue from marijuana sales this year, and probably not unrelated, Missouri is working to pass a rule that will allow banks, trust companies, associations, and credit unions to provide financial services to facilities licensed for medical marijuana. 
one step closer in these muddy, weedy waters. And last but not least, everyone, I have great news. If you go to South Dakota and you play bingo, it's now tax free. Woohoo! That's it this week for Regalytics. We have the most comprehensive, coherent, and customizable regulatory alerts tool in the world. Come and see how company after company is transforming their compliance with this kind of transparency, even if you're at home with a three-year-old. See you next Wednesday. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs>